here. Finally. And now is the time when we can all sit down and remember back to all of the good memories and give the previous year a fond farewell. Bye. Let's start the new year off with something new. Bum, bum, bum. Spaghetti squash. I know spaghetti squash isn't new. It's a huge fad that's going around right now, but it's pretty new to me and other people. When you hear the phrase spaghetti squash, you probably think of one of two things. One of which is the squash. The other one is that kitchen contraption you can buy that can turn like any vegetable into squash. No, it doesn't. It turns any vegetable into spaghetti. <laughs> We're not talking about that. We're just talking about the squash. I tried to look up the best way to cook spaghetti squash and everyone seems to have their own way. So we'll figure out the best way because that's what we do here. First, let's cover cutting this sucker in half. If you're only slightly familiar with these, or if you've never only cooked one once, cutting it in half may have made you want to go, but don't do that, because the internet has the solution for it. Apparently, all you're supposed to do is cut the stem off, and then just cut it in half, and you're done. Let's see how that works. Yep. to just put the knife in the middle and then just push down. Now my knife is stuck, there we go. And then you go on the other side and do the same thing. and you have this size squash. That's not gonna be fun to cut open. There was a trick. There was a trick I saw a couple days ago where you poke a bunch of holes in the squash and then you microwave it for a few minutes and then it's supposed to be easier to cut in half. So let's test that. For the sake of science and less variables, let's use a similarly sized squash the first time. A knife wouldn't go in. We're gonna see how a fork goes in. bunch of holes in a line. That'll be our cut line. I don't know if it has to be like that. Maybe you could do it all over. That's just what I saw on the trick. And hopefully it doesn't have to go all the way to the center because we know what happens when you have a closed object and you heat it up. I think it said to put it in the microwave for five minutes, so start with five. Go all for it. It's so warm. It's freezing in here because it's winter. Okay. Let's see. Every video I've seen, they, cut, they don't even cut the stem off. They just cut it in half. So let's just cut it in half. This. Ooh. No, it's not gonna go through. Oh, but it was so much easier. Oh. oh. It got kind of cooked on the bottom. That's not helpful. Nothing said to rotate it. Now, see now if you put this in the oven, you're gonna get cooked squash and then mush. Does it look different? I hope it looks different. Ugh. Oh well, that's why we're here, right? We're learning. Also, I had to turn the lights on because the sun went away. Sorry if it's yellow. Like the squash. <laughs> but let's go ahead. It's just this one spot, so let's go ahead. We'll put one of each into the oven, one that I just cut in half. <sighs> Brute force. And the other one that I microwaved and it's a little bit squishy on this side, so we'll see if this overcooks or maybe it'll come out really nice. And then another method I saw involving the microwave is not just to heat it up to help you cut it, but to actually cook the whole thing in the microwave. So it says to 
poke it with a knife all over. Um, and I think that needs to go all the way into the center because you're gonna put it in the microwave. I think it says for like 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big the squash is. Cool. I'll poke holes into this with the knife and put it in the microwave. And I'll put these guys in the oven and then we'll take a look at all three and see which one turns out the best. Okay, so much like pumpkin carving, you scoop out the seeds, which doesn't take a whole lot of effort. What well, does if you make a bigger mess? Clean. And then face down. Oh jeez! Don't drop the squash! Face down on the pan because you're essentially steaming the inside first. This one's already shredding because it's half done. And you've seen a lot of videos, people use olive oil or canola oil or something and they coat the inside of the squash and season it with salt and pepper. I don't want to do that because oils tend to have a very distinct flavor and maybe I don't want that with whatever dish I'm serving it. You don't need it. So I don't actually know why anybody does it. This is the one we're gonna microwave, so I'm just gonna poke a hole all the way through it, or a few holes. Four on each side, or one on each side, that's probably enough. Put it in a microwave safe dish. Perfect, it mostly fits. I'll put these in the oven, this one in the microwave, and then we'll show all three of them when they're done. And we'll see how they turn out. Okay, I let the squash sit overnight because it was way too hot to deal with last night. So you can see now that they're done, if we take a fork and we shred them, we get our lovely spaghetti strands. And that's just how this squash works. I don't know why. This is why it's called spaghetti squash. I think this is the only squash that does this. At least it's the only one that I know of. So this is the one that was just cut open and cooked in the oven um, without microwaving it. This is the one that we microwaved and put in the oven. And the only thing I don't really like about it is that I, the part that got cooked on that one side, when I was scraping out the seeds, I actually lost a lot of the flesh. So it wasn't that useful. It does still scrape off. We can get our lovely spaghetti strands. Ooh. But yeah, we lost a lot of that flesh. And then the part the part that is cooked, or that was cooked in the microwave, it really seemed like it, it got overdone. So these are the two oven ones. Perfect. I'm used to cooking it in the oven. And I say used to. I don't cook this very often. But in my experience of the few times I have cooked it, I cook it in the oven. And that works out pretty well. The, microwaved one, it's a different story. <laughs> so I put it, I left it in the dish uh, and it, it, it crushed. And a bunch of the juice leaked out. This is a really watery squash. I don't know if you can see it, Ooh. but I don't think that's really a problem because squash is very watery. And you'll see when you cook the squash and you reheat it, you're gonna have some water that comes out of it. That's fine. This, this is pretty concerning. Uh, let's cut it open. There is, this is the side. It's still really hard. But let's, let's cut open this way. Luckily it is very easy to cut open because it is so cooked. Even through the stem. Okay, oh. Yeah. The fact that that just peels away Maybe some people would find that appealing. This is really mushy though, so I think it's really overcooked. And I don't think that's necessarily the microwave's fault. I think it's just because I don't know how long to cook it in there. And with enough experimenting, you could figure out how long you need to cook it in the microwave depending on the size of the squash and how powerful your microwave is. I think it's a perfectly viable way to cook a squash. It's not my preferred method, but not everybody has an oven. So if you have a microwave and you want this, it can be done. I'm just gonna, just gonna put this over here for now. So here's how to do it in the oven. Cut it open, and we're gonna work on that a little bit more. Cut it open in half, long ways, because it's much easier to scoop the seeds out and you get a more even heat. Get your cookie sheet, pan, whatever, roasting pan, doesn't matter. And if you have parchment paper, put that down, because it's easy and then you don't have to wash it or spray the pan a little bit so because the squash will stick if you don't spray it. 
and take your half squash, put it upside down on the baking sheet or whatever. So that cooks a lot of the inside first. And they normally take, the ones that I've done take around 30 to 45 minutes. And after, I usually put it for about 20 minutes. And then I flip it over. And what that does is now you're going to, I don't know, roast is the right word, but you're going to roast the outside and it gets you all these nice little dark spots and it just adds a little bit of extra flavor. And then you're gonna cook it another 15, 20 minutes. It really, I mean, you'll, as you cook them, you will figure out how long it takes and you'll get a sense for when they're done. And I like to slightly undercook them actually, so they're a little bit more on the al dente side if we're talking about pasta. Because I'm gonna store it, I know I'm gonna store it in the fridge and then I have to reheat it to eat it again, so I'm gonna end up cooking it a little bit more. So I don't wanna cook it all the way the first time unless I'm serving it all at that time. In my oven, I cook these at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I think that can waver to 325, 350-ish. You don't wanna go too much hotter than that or it's gonna cook too fast and you're gonna get the outside done before the inside is done. Um, but that's another thing, kind of like the microwave, it's gonna depend on your oven, but whatever. 350, 30 to 45 minutes, half face down, half face up, done. And you're looking for that favorite term that everyone loves to use, which is fork tender. Which means when it's on the closer side of being done and you can stick a fork in with no effort, it's done. The first time I ever cooked this, I way, way undercooked it, actually. You'd think I overcooked it, but I didn't. Even though my fork went in and it was fine, when I ate it, it tasted kind of green, um, like raw vegetable. So even though it was technically fork tender, it needed to go a little bit longer. And that's one of the things you'll figure out the more you cook these, the more you'll understand and know how long it needs to go in. You'll figure it out, it's fine. Okay, we know the oven's a good choice, but for those of you that don't have an oven, or maybe you're not comfortable using the oven, but you have a microwave and you wanna use that, let's test that just a little bit more for you guys. This one's really close in size, the original three we did. So let's try cooking this one in the microwave, fully cooking it. And then this one is the really big one that I haven't touched yet. And I wanna try the microwave again for help cutting it. Because the other one, I just put in there for five minutes, like the original video I saw said to do, and it ended up cooking that one side that it was sitting on on the microwave. So I'm thinking maybe if we set this for two and a half minutes, turn it over two and a half minutes, and then see if it's cuttable. Especially because it's bigger, will the same amount of time work? Oh my gosh, I almost put this in the microwave without putting the holes in it. Oh, who wants to blow up the microwave today? Okay, so this is the really big one. Let's try cutting it open and see if it's easy. Well, I can already tell the stem is not, even though it's really, really warm. Okay, the stem doesn't want to go. I probably need a bigger knife, but this is what I've got. So let's try cutting it in half and see how it works. Not gonna work. Let's put it back in the microwave for five more minutes. Cause I only did it on, I did it two and a half and then flipped it over two and a half. So let's do it on the other two sides for five minutes and we'll see if that softens it up enough. Okay, this thing's friggin' hot now. Now I have to use a glove to touch it. This is becoming less and less convenient for being a microwave thing. Microwaves are supposed to make things more convenient. I only did it for the first two and a half minutes. Maybe, so what's that total? Seven and a half minutes, maybe that's enough. Too bad. Okay, now this is still really hard. Not too sure about this microwave thing. squash in half. We'll figure it out later. Let's test the other one that we cook in the microwave. Mm. You guys, it did it again. Look how squishy. 
Maybe it is. I even cooked it for less time. Instead of doing five minute increments, I did four minutes thinking maybe that would make a difference. It was like 16 minutes instead of 20. And it's just mush. <laughs> that I can eat as a single person. So I'm gonna wait to test more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment on all of your spaghetti squash adventures. Let me know how it turns out. If you use the microwave or the oven, let me know. And for more videos, don't forget to push subscribe for more testing, learning, food things.